I love that little video. Crap. Yes. Oh, so excited it's, it's for this week. It's kind of cute. It's growing on me. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Barney! Yes? If you're like me... You're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who is it? It's sweeping the nation. It's Swiffer wet jetting the nation. But uh, only the real fans, the true hardcore fans, who have been with us since the beginning, uh, back when uh, this whole thing was just a, a show on a CB radio. Yes. Back in the early days when we were both truckers. Uh only the true hardcore fans who have been with us since the beginning would know the two basic facts about the both of us. Two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts between the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple. The next Sam and Diane is Bunny and Mei Lin. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you are not doing the podcast, you are a celebrated omthriposist. Um, Thriposis. Now tell us, Bunny, for all the people out there who might not have been with us since the beginning and don't know the fact that you are a celebrated Um, Thriposis. Yes. First off, what exactly is an Um, Thriposis? And what called you to become an Um, Thriposis? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it, it is, it is a, a very, very, very important studies study in uh, marine biology. I, I study the vaginas of various fish. Um, Good. Someone and, has to. Yes, and, and yes. A lot of important research. Uh, mm -hmm. This is this is how we realize that you, you use mayonnaise in a tuna salad. Uh, yes. Because stemming directly from this research. And Definitely, it was the Vincent Epo Vincent Price episode of Flipper when I was a child. I'm nice. not sure that Vincent Price was ever on Flipper, but I'm betting he was. He played Flipper. <laughs> he played Flipper, which he, is crazy. Yeah. He it was it was all a uh, motion capture. He was a really good swimmer. Yes, he was. That's he something was that we don't know about swimmer. Vincent Price. So, that's the first fact. And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So this is the part of the podcast where, in, I get a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know too well, and I reword it via my own unique storytelling uh, razzmatazz. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Historic Approximations. Or as we like to call it. And to be clear, that is capital H, capital A, but a small P. We need that P. We crave it. Give us P. Yes. And also full disclosure, for a very long time, for a number of years, this segment was known as Steve's Historic Approximations, or SHAP as I like to call it. Repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wanted me to or not. However, a dead name is dead for a reason, and so we are moving on. <coughs> so, what is happening on half this week? This week we are discussing a very important, very historical day. July 1st! Also known as Bobby Bonilla Day! I learned about Bobby Bonilla Day for the first time this year, and it blew my mind. And I believe this is it. This isn't one of our... Out of all the shafts that we've done, this is probably one that's most commonly known. But not for folks like us, buddy. Because I know shit about sports. I ain't no shit about baseball, basketball, football. I can play them. I just don't know about them. So... It, Sports people, sports fans, baseball fans, they know about Bobby Bonilla Day, <coughs> but nerds like us probably don't. No. And so that's what we are doing here. First off, um, Bobby Bonilla is one of my favorite baseball players. To be clear, 
I have no idea if he was ever good or not. <laughs> because, again, I know nothing about sports. So let me talk about my favorite baseball players. Number one, my favorite baseball player of all time was Raleigh Fingers. I don't know how good he was, what position he played. I just know he had a handlebar mustache that, like, went out to here. It was insane. It was like Snidely Whiplash's mustache got on steroids. And that was Raleigh Finger's massive handlebar mustache. And that right there makes him my favorite baseball player. I'm also a big fan of Johnny Bench. Okay. But only because my dad knew that I was feminine and that I was a wuss, and he t he, he would he was constantly trying to make me into a man, and he made me play baseball for two years in the eighties, and I was horrible at it. So I would wake up in the mornings and I would watch a kid show on TV <coughs> called Johnny Bench and the Baseball March. Okay. And it was Johnny Bench, a bunch of little kids, and for some reason, the San Diego Chicken. And they just get into a, into adventures and learn how to be better baseball players. I would watch it every Saturday morning. Johnny Bench and the Baseball Bunch. If you remember Johnny Bench and the Baseball Bunch, remember to take your heart medication. Yes. And don't overdo it this weekend. You know how bad your knees are. <laughs> um, it, also, Pete Rose, I mentioned this in the last uh, uh, segment, part one. Huge fan of Pete Rose. I have no idea if he's good or not. Uh, he probably should be in the Hall of Fame, but he's not in the Hall of Fame because of the gambling scandal. But also... He was in so many WrestleManias getting choke slammed by Kane. So many WrestleManias. He was in like five WrestleManias where he would always end up getting choke slammed by the big red machine Kane. And that goes a long way for me. With Pete Rose's red hair in the bowl cut, he always looked like he should be part of Creedence Clearwater's revival. Nice. Yeah, I like that. What other baseball players do I know? Oh, everyone in that one baseball episode of The Simpsons. Okay. Uh, uh, we're talking softball from Maine to San Diego. Talking softball. Mattingly and Canseco. Ken Griffey's grotesque leaf swollen jaw. I haven't seen this episode in like 20 years, too. Steve Sachs and his running with the law. We're talking Homer. Ozzy and the straw. I remember that from the end <coughs> credits of The Simpsons. Holy crap, I remember that. Everyone from that episode, especially Jose Canseco. We have talked about him before on the yes, podcast. Yes, yes. I just love the fact that he exposed the steroid scandal and everyone hated him. <coughs> But he did it, and, like, I, I dig him for that. What other baseball players do I like? I like you Reggie Jackson only because out, he tried to kill the queen. You can't leave out Mookie Wilson. Mookie Wilson, that's the guy the, with the LSD. Uh... No, I don't think so. I don't think that no, was it's Mookie. not him. I was, I'm thinking of somebody else. Yeah, this is whoever just that guy was who Mookie. did the no-hitter while on LSD, he's also my favorite. Oh, he's back in there. He's back there in a half somewhere. Yeah. I know we covered yeah. him. Yeah, so now Bobby Bonilla is on my list of my favorite baseball players of all time. So, yeah, uh, this is one of those sports stories that baseball fans, that just sports fans probably know. But that movie buffs and nerds like us, no idea that this is a thing. And I'm so excited to tell this story because I find it freaking fascinating. So let's do this. Robert Bobby Bonilla, possibly one of the best batters in the whole history of Major League Baseball, it could be argued, at least according to Wikipedia. 
In the 1991 to 1992 season, he was the single highest played player in all of baseball. However, after getting this huge paycheck, he failed to live up to that paycheck and moved to team to team. And this is what led to Bobby Bonilla Day. This is how it happened. In December of 1991, the New York Mets signed Bonilla to a massive five-year $29 million contract, which, if you include inf inflation, would equal about $61 million today, which is incredible. So he was guaranteed $6.1 million a year for five years. But he started getting off his game. He started becoming confrontational. He was being a dif bit difficult to work with. So he was moved to the Baltimore Orioles. He was also moved to the Florida Marlins. Oh, shit! Steve Garvey! Oh! <laughs> I love Steve Garvey. Not because I think he's any good. I just like making fun of him. And uh, he had all those uh, sports fishing specials yeah. and skiing specials on, like, the wide world of sports. And they make fun of him on the show Cheap Seats. Yes. That used to be on ESPN Classic. The funniest show in the world that no one ever watched was the show Cheap Seats on ESPN Classic, and they loved making fun of Steve Garvey. In my mind, Steve Garvey is the um, Tommy Wiseau of baseball. Yeah, I I find it funny that that you are not even the hundredth person who has ever suddenly, unexpectedly, and out of nowhere exclaimed. Oh shit, Steve Garvey! <laughs> yeah. Freaking Steve Garvey. What a doofus. What a doofus. He is a goober. He is the textbook definition of what you would call a goober. Yeah. So, um, so, he went, Bonilla went from the Mets. To, then to the Orioles, then to the Marlins, then the L.A. Dodgers, and then finally he ended up back in the, with the New York Mets in November of 1998. By this time, he was definitely not living up to the mantle of the highest-played baseball player. Plus, he kept getting into fights with the Mets manager, a guy named Bobby Valentine, and I looked up Bobby Valentine, and apparently he has never been a Las Vegas lounge singer. Which blows my mind. Your name is Bobby Valentine. Yeah. How are you not playing in a club in in uh, Atlantic City? Yeah. At 2 a.m. I am blown away. So if, if uh, Bobby Valentine ever loses his uh, footing, he can always uh, turn to just singing. Um... And, I and hope. Mac the Knife it, will be in his repertoire. Mac the Knife, yeah. yeah. And High Hopes. I like the idea of a boxer going to the ring to the song High Hopes. <laughs> I thought that was cute. It, it, I skipped ahead a little bit to Rocky Balboa. I like that. So, uh... Bobby Valentine. By 1999, Bonilla's having a pretty crappy season, and so the Mets decide... Let's just let Bonilla go. Let's just fire. But if they do that, they have to buy out his contract, right? They still owe him $6 million on his five-year contract. So they have to buy him out, and they don't like that idea. And it's like, ah, well, I guess we have to pay him the $6 million the moment we fire him. We can't have him here anymore, but we got to get rid of the man. Man, and gee, this sucks. If only there was some other way. That's when the owner of the Mets, a guy named Fred Wilpon, he says, it's going to sound crazy, but I got an idea. Okay, hear me out, okay? We get Bonilla to agree to defer the payments a whole decade and then starting in the far off future of 2011 we the Mets agree to pay him 1.19 million 
every year until 2035. And the people who run the Mets are like, wait, so, oh, uh, hold on. So you're telling me your big idea is to not pay him and to wait to pay him roughly $30 million in the future over a number of years instead of just giving him the $6 million now. That's your idea. It's effing stupid. We can just pay him the six million dollars now instead of paying him the thirty million dollars in the distant future. Why would we do that? Why would anyone do that? But Fred Wilpon, the Mets owner, he says, "Ah, this is what I've been thinking outside the box. I've got a money guy. That's always a good sign when yeah. someone says, "Hey." I got a money guy. Oh, yeah, that's it, that sounds way above the board. That's something we all trust in. Look, I've got a money guy. He is a regular financial genius. He's just making money. He's just making money. He is a big-time financier in Wall Street. Massive office. This guy is just making people money. And so... Here's the six million that we have to give Bonilla. If we get him to agree to defer the payments, I can get the six million dollars we would pay him, give it to my money guy, and my money guy is so good with money. He's gonna turn that six million into sixty million. Meaning that not only can we easily pay off the thirty million dollars in the future to Bonilla, but we will be up on the deal with an extra $30 million for all of us. It is a win-win. Bonilla gets more money and we make more money. We would be stupid not to do this amazing plan. <laughs> and so both sides agree that he will defer payments. It's, uh, again, it's... Uh, to it's uh, by 1999. Uh, he agrees to defer payments until July 1st, 2011, at which time he will get $1.19 million a year, every year, starting on July 1st. But Bobby Bonilla, being smart, he added an addendum, 8% interest. Okay. So... That's pretty good. So Bonilla was bought out. He moved to the Braves. And he did so-so. He did okay. And then he went to the Cardinals. And again, he did fine. But injuries shortened his time on the field. His last game was on October 7th, 2001. And after that, all he had to do was sit there and wait. Meanwhile, Fred Wilpon is feeling confident. He's all like, yeah, sure we went from paying him from, sure we went from paying Bobby Bonilla six million dollars to paying him thirty million dollars, but trust me, he, you guys are gonna love my money man. He is incredible. He is just a whiz with money. Uh, he is gonna get our money. He's gonna double it, maybe even triple it, quadruple it. We are all gonna be so much richer. And he goes off to write a $6 million check to his money guy. And speaking of his money guy, Mets owner Fred Wilpon's money guy turned out to be disgraced financial grifter Bernie Madoff. Nice. Who stole millions and millions of dollars with the world's largest Ponzi scheme in history. The Mets lost their $6 million to a Ponzi scheme. And now, every July 1st, the Mets have to pay long-since-retired former baseball player Robert Bonilla $1,193,248.20. And this is why every July 1st, sports fans celebrate Bobby Bonilla Day. 
and it's a thing, and they talk about it on on like the like sports talk radio, and ESPN will make an article about it, and sometimes they'll email that they'll interview Bobby Bonilla himself, and I if you Google Bobby Bonilla Day shirts, there's a shit ton out there. Yeah. Of Bobby Bonilla Day shirts. And I, I think it's fascinating. Bobby Bonilla Day. I find this to be incredible that this long since retired basketball player in 2023, he hasn't played until 2001, but he's getting over a million dollars every year for doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That that and, and and so much better than the six mil. Yeah, so much better. Uh, the Mets played themselves. Fun fact. Which which is just the icing on the cake. Oh Isn't yeah, it's it? great. It's great. So now Bobby Bonilla is one of my favorite baseball players of all time. I have no effing idea if he's good or not, but it does not matter because of Bobby Bonilla Day. Oh, I also well, like I Randy Johnson. I think you established in your story, no, not really that good of a baseball player. Yeah, he was not. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Randy Johnson. I know that he's like this redneck who's far right, but he did kill a bird once. Oh, oh, oh With a fastball yeah. so fast that the bird disintegrated. And, that, <laughs> and I, I think that's hilarious. Yeah. So... Small side note, the current Mets owner is a guy named Steve Cohen. He sees the humor in this and has suggested in the past, possibly tongue-in-cheekily, that the team celebrate Bobby Bonilla Day every year complete with an oversized check. Okay. It is unclear if that will ever happen, but at least the current Mets owner has a, uh, a, a good... Uh, sense of humor, you know? And and there's a little potential of recouping some of the money. If you have yeah. Bobby Bonilla Day and you make it, you know, you make it like a free hat day or something like that. One of those things. Yeah. Get everybody into the park. You have the nice big check to give Bobby, you know, and make money off of Bobby Bonilla Day merch. I... To I am, try to get back those millions of dollars. There were I almost I was pretty close to buying a plane ticket to Chicago to watch a baseball game. That's to watch a serious. major league to watch a Cubs game in person. I was very close. Because I saw online, and this is one hundred percent true, apparently Tim Robinson, the creator of the greatest television show of all time, the Netflix series I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, he started out with um, the Second City improv comedy troupe in yeah. Chicago. And so to celebrate I Think You Should Leave and Tim Robinson, they had Tim Robinson come to a Cubs game to throw out the first pitch and... Everyone in attendance got an exclusive club, an exclusive Chicago Cubs Dan Flash's shirt. Okay. Dan Flash's. And, and they did a press release for it, and it was just filled with a million different, I think you should leave references. And it, they were, they were going to give out, like, free hot dogs because... Uh, hot dogs appear a lot and I think you should leave and it's like oh I'm not a sports person but I would go to this so uh, I, I I can 100% picture them doing Bobby Bonilla Day as like yeah. a big thing and getting people to show up and you know do some baseball game on July 1st I would be down for that you would still go to see the Chicago Cubs to get uh, I think you should leave shirt yeah it's it's you hate I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson? Eleanor, who are you, bunny? <laughs> How dare you? It is the funniest show of all time. It goes like this. 
I think you should leave with Tim Robinson, Cheap Seats, Syphil and Ollie. Syphil and Ollie was a show done entirely with socks. And it played on MTV at the same time as ER. You can either watch George Clooney be sexy, or you could watch Two Socks sing a Blue Oyster Cult song. It was an amazing time. So that's it for Historic Approximations or Half This Week. I love that story. I absolutely love it. Bobby Bonilla Day. Bobby Bonilla is one of my favorite baseball players of all time. And again, I don't know the sport, but it doesn't matter. Because Bobby Bonilla oh, got that got that sense, yeah. got that smarts. He's getting a big-ass paycheck every year until 2035. <coughs> good for you. Man's super old, but he's making that money, and good for him. And, uh, and I, let's I, talk about laughing all the way to the bank on that one. Got that right. This is a story that's so fascinating that that... You know, sports people know it, but even non-sports people should know the hilarious story of Bobby Bonilla Day. Because this is freaking hilarious. So, uh, be sure and join us next time for more educationally uneducational fun with... And cut on that.